What's up guys? I'm back. Oh, I feel like I have to start this off with apologizing for being gone uh, for a month. Um, we didn't do a Facebook Live last month and I apologize for that. Uh, but there is a reason. Um, I actually just within the past two months have released two EP albums um, of my own and that takes a lot of work. It took took a lot of work, and that that went on the the forefront of uh, my to do list. And um, but I still need to apologize to you guys because I, I know that these are part of the deal. These are important. These are where we get to connect and answer questions and all that stuff. So I'm back, and I hope you have all been well. And I'm ready to hit some topics. Um, I felt like today, and I always kind of do this during the Facebook lives, but I felt like today I wanted to cover topics of things that I experience with myself, like my day to day as a singer um, and performer and, and all those things. So I'm going to cover some topics that I've been noticing with myself and you may be noticing with yourself too. Um, so the first topic I want to cover is I've been doing a lot of uh, vocal recording. I've been doing a lot of, I, I do all my recording actually, um, and I do home recording. So, um, but what I've noticed is I've been, I've been noticing a, a huge difference and I, and, and I've always noticed this, but with, with recording these two EPs and really being in it for the past couple months, um, I've noticed there's a huge difference between singing live and singing in a vocal booth. Huge difference. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So for example, my experience, I, my, my favorite way to sing is to perform live. And the reason being is it feels like I can just let it all out. I can be as loud as I want. Um, I, can, I can be as animated. I can be as powerful as I want. And all I have to do is sing it out and perform and sing from my heart. Um, that's what it feels like to me for live performing. Now, vocal booth recording and recording in a studio is different because maybe it's that I do my own home recording and I don't have a sound producer or music producer other than myself, like sitting at the computer when I'm recording, but I find myself feeling like I have to hold back. And, um, and that's hard because I, I feel like... Um, you know, it's it's this whole thing of, um, you know, it, it's just this whole thing of, of feeling like I'm I'm contained, and maybe it's because I don't want to peek the microphone, maybe it's because I don't want to, um, I, I don't I don't I don't know what it is. It, it just feels like I have to be contained. Maybe it's a mind thing, um, but that's a big difference that I found, and I honestly feel like I don't sing as well when I'm doing um, in-studio vocal booth recording. Um, and that's kind of hard, because I find myself spending a lot of time doing take after take, but then at the same time, I find myself, most of the time my takes are progressively getting less authentic, if that makes sense. And, um, yeah, and that's and that's kind of a bummer, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I I feel I feel as though that is is something that I struggled with a little bit. Um, I feel like it's getting better. I'm starting to get more comfortable with it. Um, and if you experience that too, this is what I found. My suggestion is get your sound levels record. Like if if you're doing it yourself, like I do, and doing home recording get your sound levels to a place to where you are able to not peak and peak meaning like your 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 voice recording doesn't distort get get to a level to where you can sing as loud as you want and your level won't distort and that is a great way to um to get started with that and get comfortable just make sure you can sing as loud as you want and and as comfortable as you want um, so that is one topic. Um, so a little bit more on that topic is, um, it's hard for me to sing from my heart. I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm just kind of going through the motions and I have to snap out of that and get myself into a place of, Hey, sing from your heart, man. You know, like sing as if you were singing a live recording and there's a barrier there. 
and at least for me and you maybe for you too but that's something that um, is tricky but you know with with all this stuff more practice more experience um, you know that that's what will get you where you want to be I think my hindrance within that is um, I'm still learning producing and I've actually been producing for like 10 years but I still feel like I'm I'm still learning it so just getting comfortable with uh, home recording and singing uh, into a vocal microphone um, so another thing I've noticed too is um, practicing uh, out live like singing out live um, and oh sorry I skipped a topic let me go back um, practicing and singing guitar and then we'll get to the playing live so um, did I just say singing guitar? If I did, excuse me. Um, it's early here where I am. But um, yeah, so I talk a lot about, you know, practicing singing and whatever instrument you ha may have, like uh, uh, guitar, uh, guitar or piano or whatever instrument you accompany yourself with, if you do that. That is like going to the gym or not going to the gym. So when you practice, you get more experience, your voice gets stronger. Um, if you play guitar, it, your, your guitar playing gets stronger and um, you're more uh, comfortable with it. So if you don't do that, then it's like not going to the gym and losing your muscle mass or your, your strength and stuff like that. And to be quite honest with you, I've been doing for the past couple years I've been writing for television and film and that means that I've been doing a lot of home recording very little I, I actually don't think any playing out live for the past couple years um, because I've all just I've just been doing um, home recording uh, for television and film but I was recently invited to play a, a Christian music festival um, in September and I thought, oh, okay, well, cool. I mean, that's something I want to do. I, it, you know, it looks like a cool festival. I want to be a part of that. Um, but I realized, and I was actually practicing this morning, that all these songs that I've recorded, it's a whole different beast playing them live. Um, and I don't, and I haven't ever played these songs out really. I mean, I've, I've, I've played them out like maybe like on radio shows and podcasts and stuff like that, but I haven't actually performed a whole set live with these songs ever. So I'm having to learn that and I'm recognizing this is like me wanting to get fit and going to the gym for the first time in a long time. And it's interesting. So with that being said, I find myself having to, I feel like I'm starting from the beginning when it comes to playing these songs. And some songs I know, some songs I've written years ago uh, and I know better than others, but these new songs, I'm having to learn, I'm having to get to know them. And it's like, I have to get them in my heart. I have to get them to a place where I can sing and perform them and I'm connected to them. And that's taking a lot of practice. It's taking a lot of time, just like if you wanna go to the gym and get fit, it's gonna take determination, practice, and time. And so parts of it are gonna suck. Like this morning I was playing some songs and I felt like they really sucked. But I know they're gonna get better um, you know, especially since I have several months to perform or to prepare for this, uh, this music festival. Um, I feel fortunate to have that time. Sometimes you don't have that time. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it's something that, that you have to start from the ground up and you have to be determined and diligent and practice the songs that you want to perform. And I'll tell you why you should do that because you never know when opportunity is going to come. So here's an opportunity I missed that I'll tell you guys about. A um, couple weeks ago, I was actually invited to Nashville to um, attend this music industry event. And one of the things they did was they invited me to play live in front of all these in industry people, which, which is not everybody got to do that, but they uh, believed in my songs and you know me as an artist and they invited me to do that. And guess what I said? I said, thank you, but no. And I'll tell you why I said no. Because I did not feel like I had these songs that they heard, that they liked, under my fingers. And I didn't want to go out there and disappoint them. Um, 
So I missed an opportunity there because I wasn't in practice or quote unquote, to use the gym analogy, in shape. So I don't feel like I would have done those songs justice if I would have performed there. So I chose not to. And I saw other people perform there and they were great, you know, and I could tell they had their songs down. So that is my journey right now, getting these new songs as my, you know, as I release my singer songwriter material under my own name, getting these songs that I've recorded down to play live um, because I don't want to miss opportunity and I want to be able to say yes to things. So I need to have these, like, I need to know these like the back of my hand, be able to whip out my guitar and sing them from the heart any time opportunity presents itself because you, you never know what opportunity will bring. Um, so you, you want to say yes to, to all of them, all opportunity that you feel is uh, going to help you in your career. Um, so this goes to, all of this kind of comes down to, okay, well, what's a great way to see if I'm, if these songs are down and under my belt? Now, here's another difference. Playing in your bedroom and singing in your bedroom is a lot different than playing out live. So you can have a song down and you can, you can totally feel like it's ready to go out and play live. But you'll notice, if you haven't noticed yet, when you have the song down and you're out in front of people, nerves come in and you, you, your brain kind of, kind of scrambles because of fear or whatever. The nerves just come in and it's different. So you may not be as ready as you think you are because you're not used to performing this song that you have down out live. But how to get over that is you just gotta keep performing live. So for example, a great way to get used to singing, and I say this to all my students, um, and I'm sure I've said it uh, within these Facebook Lives, and I know I've said it within the Simply Singing course, that sign up for an open mic if you accompany yourself or get somebody to accompany with accompany you or if you're just a singer sign up for uh or go to a karaoke night because that is the best way to get used to singing songs in front of people and then when it's time for you to do your own show or or to record or whatever you'll be ready because you have the experience of being on the spot and you'll really get to see if you you really are as ready as you think you are because if you can go out there and you can kill a performance and you can you can nail that song live then you are ready and you got that song and you just you just got to keep practicing it so it doesn't go away but um but that's a great way to test where you're at so i recommend signing up for as many open mics or going to as many karaoke nights as you can within your schedule because that is really uh, that that puts that it's like it lines everything you've learned up and it glues it all together and it solidifies it and performing live is the best way to solidify your song or yourself as a singer so that that kind of connects to all this too um the last thing that i want to cover um is something that i've for years students i've talked to students about this and uh, I've been fortunate enough for years to never have to really consider this, but I guess I'm finding myself considering it now. And that is being in a, in a housing situation to where you feel like you're singing too loud and people are gonna hear you, whether it be neighbors or family members or, sorry, I gotta switch hands here. Um, set that down. Um, neighbors or family members hearing you and feeling embarrassed or feeling like you're um, uh, disturbing them and for years I've been in housing situations to where I could really sing as loud as I wanted and you know my family was cool with it um, and it wasn't bothering anybody but now in this situation I'm in now um, I live in an apartment complex now and um, I kind of have to consider that am I being too loud for my neighbors and it sucks because I find myself not feeling like I can sing to my full capacity. And it's a big bummer. Um, but what I have to do is I have to find times to where I know like, okay, you know, I know that, that you know, either the neighbors aren't typically home at this time, or this is a time to where everybody's out and about and, and noise isn't as much of an issue. 
and I and I have to choose those times and then when I commit to those times not be afraid you know if you're really bothering somebody eventually they're going to either tell on you and complain or just come straight to you and say hey this is too loud and that's all good you know they'll let you know and if they don't then the best you can do is assume that it's okay um, so so get getting getting past that holding back because truly if you hold your singing back you'll you'll develop habits and and patterns that are are going to actually hinder your singing overall i've i've experienced it you know and um you know that's not good you want to be able to sing sing out and i guess it's coming full circle right now maybe that is why i feel hindered within my vocal booth in my apartment because maybe I'm worried that the neighbors are going to complain. But I, that's something I gotta get over, that's something you gotta get over because we don't want to develop those patterns of holding our voice back. So, you know, and, and if you just are in a situation to where you just can't, you just can't, you know, you know, like your neighbors have complained or your roommates or whatever, then I actually came across something which I don't know exactly what it is. I just briefly glanced over it on Amazon to where it's a it's it's kind of like a muzzle and it goes over your mouth and you sing but it contains the sound. Strange, you know. I don't know if I'd actually buy one, but if if you really feel like that's something that would help you, look into it. I don't know exactly even what it's called, but you know, I guess go go on Amazon and <laughs> type in voice muzzle or something like that and I'm sure it would pop up but um, but yeah so that's a little bit from my own experience um, things that I've touched on in the course and and giving you some real-life day-to-day experience through myself with things you know showing a hey I'm practicing what I'm preaching and I'm still learning with you too and hopefully what I go through I can share with you and it will help you along your journey if you're in the same kind of boat so anyways, guys, thank you so much for uh, being a part of the course in this community and um, you know, and thank you for bearing with me when I try and get my own musical stuff done. Uh, I don't foresee you know, a, a big project like that uh, coming in again, so we'll be more connected. I'm always here if you need me. Um, email me if you have any questions. Um, uh, jtmusic253 at gmail.com and I'm happy to be here for you and answer anything that I can but uh, proud of you guys proud of you guys sticking with the course you know I'm, I'm able to see your progress and and uh, you know and, and I get your questions and I'm, I'm proud of you guys it takes a lot to commit to something like this um, but if you're serious about it it will pay off it truly will all it takes is determination dedication perseverance and um, a willingness to make mistakes so anyways guys I am off and I hope you have a great day great evening whenever you're watching this and uh, we will talk soon